This week's episodes were brought to you by the generous support of Yukofin. Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our Project Mighty Spud, which is our Unity project where we're trying to build a system to render a whole planet into a terrain, um, as well as some other stuff we're going to do, the ability to go from space to a planet and back and forth, and uh, some other things too, like placing buildings and whatnot. We've done some great work so far. This is a large series of terrain chunks over here that um, do correctly go from the equator over here to the South Pole over there. Now, as we can see, there are still some seams going on between some of these bits. Now, um, there's a couple of different reasons why this is almost certainly happening. One of the things I'm pretty confident about is that this code here, this is the code, this converts our chunk position to a latitude longitude, um, which we can then use to get UV coordinates from the height map. I believe, I think this is uh, doing a pin cushion effect. I think that's what's happening. I think the seams that we're seeing are going to tend to be, ooh, interesting recompiling, more prominent in the corners, as we can see there. And in theory, right in the middle of these chunks, um, it should be mostly, if not almost exactly equal in most of these places, uh, barring some pretty high like height changes. Like here, you can see here, it looks like it's mostly equal um, in the middle of these two chunks. And then as you get closer to the edges here and here, <clears throat> the differences be, become more pronounced, um, which becomes more or less evident depending on what the terrain on each side of the chunk is, for example. And I think the reason for it is this where, yes, it's time for a, a, a doodle. If we have, say, a terrain chunk here, right? We're starting from the middle. And what we're doing is we're moving, say, 10 degrees um, south, right? We're moving 10 degrees south this way, and that's fine. And same thing for the chunk below it. We're doing this and say, you know, we've, we've got it set up to go 10 degrees north. And I think that's accurate. The issue is this, when you're talking about the sides, and actually I'd, I'd much appreciate it if I could draw this a little bit more square, which is really not my forte, but there we go. <clears throat> Something like that, okay? Um, these edges, what's really going on here is you gotta think of them as sort of latitude and longitude lines in, in a sense, right? If we consider what's going on here, we're going X number of degrees this way. And then what we're doing is this line is basically, at that point, turning into a longitude that pinches down to the pole over here, right? Same thing here. You get this sort of curved line that pinches down over there and then to the North Pole. And the same thing is happening horizontally because of the way we're working things. Now, you're not used to thinking of latitude lines as pinching down to a pole, but it's what we're, the way we're implementing this basically is this top line is so many degrees this way. And then going off this way, really what we're happening is things are going to pinch down to like an East Pole because of the way we're working things, okay? And that's, and that's okay, this is, this is the way we'd kind of gotten around to it, but I think what's happening is that in these corners like this, what we're ending up with, and this is like wildly exaggerated, but we're ending up with this situation where this position here, this sort of longitude line and this one here, I think are supposed to be brought in and it actually becomes even more obvious if you sort of draw kind of these, um, these lines that go this way. I think we're ending up with a situation where, while this is the corner of the chunk, I think this bit needs to get pulled in that way, or it's the other way around. Um, this sort of, we've got a pin cushion or unpin cushion, one of these things to get the corners to work right. But I'm going to say that that is beyond me. I'm not even sure if this is 100% true, um, but I'm going to put in this note here. Uh, someone smarter than me will have to figure this out, okay? I think we can end up with a more cal uh, accurate calculation here, or maybe it's something in rotation to UVB, but I don't think so. I think it's this bit over here, <clears throat> but I'm gonna call that beyond me. And instead, I'm gonna focus on ways to minimize, <clears throat> excuse me, these seams that show up. Because I think even if we ended up with a, a, a more correct equation over here, I think there's still a possibility that you'll get some seams just because of, you know, rounding errors with floating points and different things like that. So I think no matter what, we've gotta go and put in um, some actual stitching between these terrain chunks. Remember what I thought we were going to do um, when we were doing this uh, um, neighbor code right over here? Uh, terrain chunks set neighbor. 
okay, which is just telling the terrain engine what its neighbors are. <clears throat> For some reason, I thought that I was going to stitch, uh, which doesn't actually make any sense. What this does is this um, uh, hint to the terrain engine uh, about um, how to improve LOD calculation, level of detail calculations, right? Because the, the whole thing with the train engine does all this level of detail calculations, that stuff further away isn't rendered with the same amount of precision and it's rounded off and things like that. So one of the reasons we're using the train engine because it's great for doing that kind of thing because us having to do our own level of detail calculation and dynamically generating, regenerating messages on the fly, that would be even harder than what we're doing now, I'm pretty sure, at least like on a planetary scale. It's fine with like individual models, but this sort of continuous train, I think it would be very tricky. So we're going to hint about the level of detail calculations over here um, to the train engine. And that's what set neighbors is doing. But we would also like it, I'm going to suggest, you see where we've got in rebuild chunks over here. I had this note to do this is where we want to potentially hint at chunks to eliminate seams. That might be true, but I think we can incorporate that as part over here. Let's say before we go and tell the train engine what its neighbors are for a level of detail, what we should do here is <clears throat> something like, like fix the seams between chunks, okay? In a sense, this is sort of cheating, right? Like ideally you would have the the calculation right over here that ultimately ends up with the pixel from the height map, which gives you the height. We would like it to end up with exactly the same value on both sides of the chunks, no matter what, with no rounding error, you know, nothing weird going on with the bilinear calculation or anything like that. But I don't think we can ever guarantee that, which means at some point there'll almost certainly still be a micro seam that might show up from time to time. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to guarantee that there's no seam by stitching them together and forcing the heights to match right over here. Now, um, this, if we just literally do the one uh, height map information on the edge here, this will lead to still a little bit of a weird distortion as it like slopes suddenly to match the other side. It won't look quite right. You won't see a gap, but it won't look quite right. Um, you could d decide to smooth multiple of these, um, the terrain height map information to sort of make it a little bit smoother. That's a possibility. Uh, the other thing though, is these chunks are still way too large. I mean, not large in Unity world space. Each one of these chunks is, I don't know, one kilometer. It could be any arbitrary side, size in Unity world space. But each of these chunks is rendering too much of the world. As we know, if we were to try to render 100% of the world in one chunk, we would end up with a horribly distorted image because we'd be back at our, you know, Mercator production, uh, projection. Actually, I think this is a cylindrical projection. Um, we'd be back at that. We'd be at, like, horrible distortion. Um, but it's still relatively large that we end up with, if I can bring up the Photoshop, um, over here, a fairly large delta between this sort of long fake longitude, latitude kind of thing, and the corner of the chunk. Um, and if each chunk were rendering less of the world, because these curves, as you look into a small part of a curve, right, when you're very close to a curve, just like when you're standing on the surface of the earth, you're looking at a small part of it, it looks flat, same thing happens. So if the... Um, if we were to go and change in our dynamic terrain master the degrees per chunk to something much more realistic, which is probably going to be something like one degree, you really won't see as much of that curvature difference. And not only that, but we'd be smoothing out the world because right now, like we're rendering um, a single chunk could have like, you know, multiple multiple craters but if we're rendering much less one crater will actually span multiple chunks and so the height difference the changes will all be sort of smoothed out a little bit it, it's a it's a combination of both this as well as in our actual chunk generation um how much we scale like the height map the, the size basically um and or put in the uh the height map resolution anyway so as we get to chunks that render fewer degrees per chunk, those differences start to evaporate pretty significantly. But I still want to force the stitching to eliminate any doubt whatsoever. And it's possible that if we force the stitching and render the chunks a little bit smaller, um, the rendering will be accurate enough that to the naked eye, you everything will look perfectly fine. But I'm still convinced that there is a... Um, a, a room for improving this sort of process here. And I just can't figure out right now. Maybe at some point later I will, or someone smarter than me will do it. So <clears throat> what are we back to? Oh yes, right over here. So set neighbors over here um, is going to be 
fixing the seams between chunks. Basically what we're going to do for the right edge, if we have a neighbor to our right, then the right edge of the current chunk, we're going to set that height to the height of the left edge of the other chunk, or maybe an average in between the two, which is actually probably much more likely. Um, so there's that. But the thing is right now, set neighbors isn't being called at all. Like what? No, it's not. Remember, we actually disabled it last time because set neighbors gets called in rebuild chunk. Here's set neighbors here. It gets called inside of rebuild chunk and rebuild chunk is currently commented out right over here. And the reason it's commented out is because rebuild chunk requires our array of terrain chunks to be correct and functional. Let me just line these up over here because that'll feel much better. These terrain chunks over here, which is our three by three array currently to hold our terrain chunks, we're not populating that right now. Um, if I were to uncomment uh, rebuild chunks, we would actually get an error because terrain chunks is full of like null objects. And the reason for that is over here, we're no longer storing the train chunks. Train chunk, uh, the train chunk array is literally just filled with nulls and can't do anything. The reason we're doing that is because we put in the, um, we're building these rows um, using this like build row function over here. Um, and we're moving everything over. So anyway, I, I just spent 11 minutes talking about stuff and not actually doing any work. So what we have to do today is we actually have to get rid of this this build row function over here um, because that was great for testing, but isn't actually going to represent how we're going to move our character around over here. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is this. Okay, we're going to keep going with a little bit of hard coding assumption here. Um, we are going to have what we have to do is repopulate terrain chunks. So we have our three by three array that is terrain chunks, and the middle chunk we are always going to be using sort of as a as a root chunk from which everything, all the other chunks, the ones on the, the edges, right? Because remember, we're doing a, um, we've got a little array of terrain that looks like this, right? And so that, that O chunk in the middle, that, that's always going to be what all the X's get derived from. Uh, so for the very first time, we're going to land somewhere on the planet, and that's going to be the center chunk. After that, so we're getting rid of build row over here. After that, what we're going to do is have something like um, build chunk array, I guess, which um, will loop through everything in our array, right? So 4x uh, is less than num uh, x would be in calls, uh, for y is less than num rows, and it's going to do something. We do have to make sure if terrain chunks 1, 1, if this one is equal to null, then we say debug.log error, no middle chunk, and we just bail out of here because we have to make sure that there's a middle chunk. But other than that, other than that, what we do is, so um, if uh, terrain chunks um, x, y is equal to null, build the missing chunk. And just like how in our build row, we were building a chunk based on a parent chunk, we're gonna do the exact same thing over here like that. Okay. So now actually I can get rid of this giant commented out section like so. All right. So we have to build the missing chunk. Um, and you can see that it's, it's trying to use a root. Well, our root in this case, I guess I can just do this because this doesn't actually any, any real overhead. Our root is the center of our terrain chunk, which is at the one, one. Um, again, we're right now we're hard coding some stuff in. We'll, we'll try to uh, generalize, uh, after, but this will guarantee. So this is our middle chunk of our three by three area. That is our root, and that's going to be the root of our rotation. It's also going to be root of our position. Then we offset by a certain amount. Now, both this y deer and this, this is actually an x deer. There, well, let's do that. Uh, float x deer. Actually, I guess it could be an int. It doesn't matter. Is that, uh, and float y deer is presumably the same thing. So remember, if... If this value, or this value, if, I, if this is zero, then this comes out to minus one. If it's one, it comes out to zero. And if it's two, it comes out to plus one. So this is always gonna be minus one, zero, or plus one, uh, whether or not we rotate and or move in a certain direction. So we can use those 
and those. The gotcha is that, uh, let's think about this. Um, the question is whether positive Y deer is north or south um, in, our, in our relative area. Well, well, I guess we can test for that pretty easily, actually. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this line. I mean, it's actually, hold on. It really is very close to this line here. We are setting, we're going to store this new terrain chunk. So at X and Y, we are going to build a new chunk and store it in our array at X and Y. So we're looping through our whole array, building chunks based on our neighbor. Um, okay. So the big question will be, is our Y inverted or not? So let's hit play. No object exception. 132. Uh, first of all, this shouldn't be the case. All our neighbors should be assigned. Let me comment out rebuild chunks here. Because clearly there's something wrong because one of our spots in, in terrain chunks isn't going to be assi isn't assigned, which is why we're getting an error here. But let's just comment that out for now. We'll run through this bit and we'll, we'll get a better sense about what the heck is going on or not going on. Oh! <clears throat> we actually have to call this function or nothing's going to happen. Shut up. It's fine. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Excellent. Okay. And things are correct here. That's very good to see. Now, what I want to do, though, is I want to put in a little catch here. I If x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2, then we're just going to, um, I'll just say continue. What that does is it will continue the loop. Really, it's the end of the loop anyway, but we're just going to hit continue. We're going to skip. The one where x is equal to and y is equal to 2, we're going to skip that one so that we can see clearly which one that one is. All right, so it's at the top. So the top right corner is x2, y2. Okay, so that's just, just so that we can keep it in our heads. Positive y is, well, north in our current viewpoint. All right, so we've got this build chunk array that's here. We're going to keep the rebuild chunks out of here. But the, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get our movement code started. Um, and basically, because the way this is going to work is as we move, as our character moves, what's going to happen, we're going to enter a new chunk, right? We're going to we're starting the center chunk, we're going to move in some direction, and then we're going to enter a new chunk. When we enter a new chunk, what we want to do is update our array such that at any given time, the chunk that our character is in is in the middle of our array. And we want to slide things in such a way that that's true. Um, and then we want to rebuild this chunk array. So I'm going to do uh, a, for testing, slide chunk array. Because we don't have a character to watch or anything like that. So we're going to slide in a particular direction. And I guess what we'll do, I guess we'll do the thing where we keep moving towards the south pole. Um, and south is negative y. So what does that mean? So move south by one row of chunks. So if we're going to do that, what we want to do is we want to take we want to take our bottommost row and put it in the middle. The middle row is going to go to the top, and we're going to generate a new bottom row. Yes. So, um, so what? Okay, here's the way it works. Our uh, the top row gets set gets set to the values of the middle the middle gets set to the values of the bottom uh, the bottom gets um, nulled out then we call Build chunk array, which will create a new bottom from the uh, uh, relative to the new middle. There we go. That's going to be the sort of idea. So what we need is a loop. Uh, not much of a loop. We actually just need a loop that goes left to right. So we need a 4x is less than num columns. Okay. And then this gets put in here. So our top row is terrain chunks 
x0 is getting set to terrain chunks x1. So we're taking the value of the middle and stuffing the value of the top. Our old top over here, that, that terrain that's out there, we actually have to, we have to get rid of it. Because we don't want it to exist anymore. I mean, we could leave a trail behind us. That's fine. But that's not actually what we want to do. So what we want to do is we want to call destroy on the old top rows game objects to get them out of there. Because we're only going to want nine at any given time. Okay, so that's that. Then, so we need to make sure we set the middle to the bottom. Wait, this is wrong. I'm getting the order wrong. The top row is the 2 that then gets set to the 1. The middle is a 1 that gets set to the bottom, which is 0. There we go. That's good. And then the bottom row, which is the 0, gets set to null. Because what was in the bottom is now in the middle. So this what is now going to be the bottom gets set to null because then when we call this, it'll create a new bottom row for us. Oops. Like that. I believe that's true, and then, so this testing slide chunk array, what we're going to do is we're going to go way up here. We're going to make an update function, because we don't have one right now. It's just going to be if um, input dot get key down key code dot space. When we hit the space bar, we are going to call testing slide chunk array. And what should happen is we should basically be moving towards the south, and after we hit it blank number of times, we should reach the South Pole. I think that's true. Hit play. Okay. Space. Um, something went wrong. We destroyed the wrong row of stuff. Oh, 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 oh. I know what it is. Where's where's the thingy? Where's the example? Oh, right here. Uh, right, I forgot to change this number over here. So kill that because we're destroying the bottommost chunk. Uh, so it's two. There we go. We're destroying the wrong row of things. Try that again. Make sure the mouse is or make sure the game view has focus. Otherwise, it won't take your keybinds. There we go. There we go. There we go. Excellent. So this is as our character is walking south through this line. If we keep going, there's a bit of, you know, it takes a little bit of time to process that. And right now it's happening in the main thread, which means the game would actually freeze for that half second or whatever it is to generate. And there we go. We're at the South Pole. And if I were to keep hitting this, we would eventually reach the equator again. Although, everything should be upside down. Right? Yes. Everything should be upside down when we reach this equator. Oh, uh, ah, right, right, of course. Um, let's bring up the topography. Actually, let's open it up in the Photoshops here. Um, what has happened is we started here, right? We're starting on the, the left edge, basically, the prime meridian. Walked south through the South Pole. We know we got there because we saw this black square looks like an arrow because of the distortion. And then we loop through here. But now what we're doing is we're coming through down here, right? We're on the opposite side of the world, traveling, still traveling south. At no point did we stop traveling south. We traveled south until we hit the South Pole. Uh, wait, that's not true. I'm, I'm being wrong. We traveled south until we hit the South Pole, and now we're here traveling north. And if we keep going, we will eventually hit the North Pole, then wrap around to here slash here, because they're the same points. We're going to wrap around to the North Pole, we're going to start traveling south again, and we're going to hit our five once more. Okay. Let's, I guess we're going to keep hitting space. So that's the equator. We are still hitting north at this point. And we're traveling like negative Z over here, right? We're traveling in the down direction in our view here, but we are actually traveling north. At some point, we hit the North Pole. Now, we don't have a little ticky at the North Pole, so we won't be able to clearly identify where that is. Notice that one side of, uh, of the moon is a lot uh, more cratery than the other. And there we go. And we've wrapped around enough that we've returned to the equator, and we are once again traveling south. Now, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Why, why is that? Why is that? Because this chunk here should have been created relative to this chunk in the middle, which is exactly the same 
which is exactly the same as what happens on the first boot. Why is it so cut? You can see like the distortion is happening here and in the same way. It's not like that when we first started, right? But shouldn't it be? If this were a problem like this, shouldn't it be exactly the same when we start the program? Because the center chunk, as far as I know, is is correct. I wonder if there's some, uh, there's like a, a rotation on the Z axis, in a sense. Not well, not this Z axis, this Y axis, but I don't know quaternions. So, so for some, for some, um, for some uh, reference point, you know, the axis that goes vertically through here, right? and allows us to do sort of twisting. Um, there, Some of that can develop, and I'm wondering if there's some sort of rotation there that we're not mathing properly. Because this is fine, but yeah, we're getting that kind of great circle from here. There's, hmm. Is, huh. No, no, I mean, that's fine. We're leaving what... Hmm. Huh. But I don't understand why it doesn't happen on the first one. Because we create the first one with, you know, some null value, and then we, we build the chunk array from around that. And in theory, when we wrap all the way around, this center tile that we're building everything from should end up being exactly the same, but clearly it's not. There's some sort of internal drift, but I don't have the debug information to tell that. Again, if I stop and play, the middle chunk... Uh, first of all, we're physically in a different direction. I mean, there is... No, no, it's it's pretty even. It, like, looks a little weird when you zoom out because of level of detail, but no, they're nice and cut over here. And it's the same letters, right? D and, D and F. I don't think it was just a zoom level thing. Why... Hmm. I don't know. And I don't like that. Out of curiosity, let's go and give, um, I'm going to take this rotation. No, no, because we've tested for that before, right? If I take the current rotation and I just multiply it by a new Euler quaternion with, just for the, the sake of argument, I'm going to give it a rotation through, is it through the Y in this case? Yeah. Let's give it a 45 degree rotation through the Y. Everything is still good and happy, isn't it? Let's hit play. So everything should be angled 45 degrees. Uh, okay, no, it is through the Z. Wait, is it? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, there you go. Everything's angled at 45 degrees and everything looks mostly okay and what's actually quite fun now is if i hit space like what direction are we moving oh now see oh there is something going on but why so the problem is with my sliding code Uh, no, I mean, uh, I, hmm, no. Yes, now I understand. On the first pass, all the chunks are being generated from the middle bit. Yes, okay, I've got this. The first pass, all the chunks are being generated from this middle bit. See, all, all eight of them are being generated from this. When we hit space, the old middle that everything was based on, that these six, these six at the top are all based on this, which was our old middle. The row on the bottom here is actually being generated on this. So it makes sense at this point that you get some distortion. I mean, if it was still basing it on the top one, then it wouldn't, but that's not what we're looking for. <sighs> What do you do? I mean, I can't, I can't move everything, make a new middle, and then regenerate all the chunks based on that. Or can I? I was say, because we've just left a chunk, right? We've left here, and we're going here. We could regenerate all the chunks based on that, 
Um, but the problem with doing this is that it would regenerate the chunk that we're still technically standing right next to. That being said, the values between these two will be almost unchanged, so it'll be mostly imperceptible, but not totally imperceptible, and of course there's the big performance overhead. But, the problem is... I think... I think what's holding us back might be might be this. Or is it? Hmm. Now I totally see the issue. This chunk down here will always be fine because this chunk being generated by this is okay. The problem is that and and this edge here will always be fine between these two because they're being generated from the same root. The problem is that this and this are being generated from different roots and have different innate orientations. Because they're relative to a different spot. So there's some some bit of our code I think that might still need to be tuned, but I don't know where or how. Oh, crap. I might have painted myself into a bit of a corner here. And the problem is I don't know exactly which thing it is. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. That's that. Um, is the assumption that we generate the chunks from the center wrong? No, it's the children that are wrong. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I should not be uh, throwing in some random Simpsons memes into all this. Um, it could be this. It could be that we've never actually been setting exactly the correct rotation relative to the parent chunk, and we're going to drift the further away we are. So there could be something there, or there could be something here. Or there could be both. And really, we're basically doing the same sort of thing with both, right? This, this way that we're, we're adding the rotation, right? The base rotation, and we're multiplying it by a certain Euler rotation based on our degrees per chunk. And the same thing could be happening here, because it is. We've got a root rotation, and then we're multiplying it based on an Euler um, rotation based on degrees per chunk. We're doing exactly the same behavior in both places. So whatever the correct solution is, it's going to be applied to both. And it's it's so damn close, but it's not perfect. Now again, we could minimize the effect of that if we do go and radically shrink our chunks down. Then, then that drift effect will be not as noticeable. And it's never a drift effect. It's not going to get worse over time. The amount that it's bad by is going to be exactly the same no matter what. Um, so yeah, here we just need a little bit of token stitching in the corners. We know that. And now, now if I were to go and do the spacebar thing, it's not any noticeably worse. And that will be true, um, forever. Because it's not, it doesn't have a, a drift, it doesn't become worse over time. The amount that the, um, that in this case, this bottom left corner is offset from the middle left corner right? That, that this gap and this sort of distortion, the amount that it's off should be consistent permanently. But it's there. It's not noticeable at small scales, but I hate the fact that it's actually wrong. But is it the sort of wrongness that we can't overcome? I don't actually believe that. I just might not be able to do anything about it. But yeah, it's not going to be noticeable at all at small scales. Of course, this is kind of boring to look at, though. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. And next episode, what we're going to do, at some point, we still are going to have to stitch the train together. Um, and that doesn't actually eliminate um, any sort of distortions from inaccuracies. It makes sure there's no gap, but we'll still see if there's if things aren't lining up very well, we will still be able to tell that they're not lining up very well. There just won't be an actual hole in the geometry. Uh, actually, with the, uh, the diagonal aspect, it's a lot harder to tell that things aren't lining up right because, you know, it's easier to tell when something is off when they're supposed to be a straight line. So again, the first train chunk is fine. It's when we hit space and we get the next one that in theory we're getting a little bit of a misline up over here. And it's actually really hard to see with this five degrees of angle. I mean, you know, again, there's a gap here. This, so again, this code here, which is exactly the same as, as what we're doing over here, okay? This bit of code here and here. 
there's something slightly off about it. It's not completely wrong. We're there. We're like 99% of the way there. I just don't know. I mean, it's because at this point, we're doing a very flat sort of cylindrical projection. Again, if we were to generate the entirety of our map using this, where we're taking like a, a fixed, a, a, a linear amount, I'm wondering if it's because we are, in effect, what we're doing here is almost like a, a lerp, right? A, a linear sort of job. If we did do it a sort of a, of a more of a slurp, something spherical in how we shift from one chunk to another, I mean, in the end, the bottom left corner would be exactly the same in both, and they're still wrong, so that's not the solution. Well, I'm gonna put a cut in here. I mean, we've we've definitely, you know, this is, this is good. The, the movement we've got is good. But yeah. On the bright side, yeah, it's not the fact that when we went around the entire world that some error that grew over time got worse. It's not that. The error is constant and doesn't grow, which is a very nice thing. And you can hardly see it here, at th even at the five degrees, which in my opinion is still like way too large of an area per chunk, you can't see it anymore. Because again, the smaller the area that each one of these chunks represents, the more that our weird latitude and longitude lines are straight. And this might be enough to correct the error. Again, no matter what, we were always gonna have to do this stitching because again, as far as I know, in the middle part of between two chunks, I mean, you've got two chunks here, right? So we've got the, you know, I could just take two and move them aside. Here, let me do that. So you, 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 and you go away. So in the middle here, where they meet up, there is basically very little distortion, and yet there's still a microscopic little gap. I don't think it'll ever be very big in the middle, uh, but we're still going to want to do the stitching. And maybe with, you know, the smaller map size and the stitching, it won't be too bad. It still bothers me that it's not right, but I'll have to leave it into one of your capable hands to do it, because I've already spent, this 30-minute this episode actually took me, like, several hours today to work out. Again, part of it is, like, figuring out the best, you know, next step, and then how to approach it and all that, but... <laughs> can we go back to doing the threads? I can at least go through those a lot faster. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Thank you, all our March Patreon supporters and these mic check supporters. We've got Yukofin, Snoopy TRB, Pavel Zdenov, Drazion, Gavin Power, Jan Tori Vell, Michael McClintock, Aaron Doibson, Craig Mortel, the not so evil engineer, Julian Ogilafon, Marys Fieldvold, Speedy Savant, Steven Stager, Valiant, that's probably Stadger, I don't know, Valiant Cake Fiend, Jason Yanity, Stephen Bonnerman, Kale the Quick, Neil Blakely, Milner, and everyone who has watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed. Thank you so, so much.